Hey guys, so I finally purchased all of the parts and pieces that I think I will need for my electric hand cycle conversion. In this video, I will go over all those pieces, where I got them, why I got them. Um, I already have my bike jersey on. I am uh, super anxious to get this thing and install it. Uh, today, I will go out hand cycling with my son and my dad, which should be fun, uh, hopefully up Highway 4. And uh, hopefully, either the next time or the time after that, when I go out, they'll be trying to play catch up with me, not the other way around. So let's get into all the things I bought. So I bought the Crystallite pre-laced uh, rear kit um, on Grin Technologies ebikes.ca website. This is, again, a great site that I keep referencing. I thought I could go over all of the different options I selected. To get to this kit, you just have to go to shop DIY kits, Crystallite H series kit, and then the Crystallite Prelace Rear H kit advanced pedal assist sensor. I got this kit for a variety of reasons. One is the Crystallite motor was the most efficient of the ones I tried in the motor simulator. And it also was on a decent discount. So as you could see here as configured, it's $150 cheaper than it was before. And the big reason for that is this motor is using the old JST style connector. And the, uh, they have tried to go to the new L10 connector, which is more waterproof and uh, better in a variety of different ways. But I don't expect to bike with this bike in the rain much, or really at all, especially since I live in California and it doesn't rain much. So I thought that that was a decent enough trade-off to get this discount. So um, let's go through all the options. And as you can see, it's out of stock here. I got the 3525. The 3540 and 3548 are just different windings for the motor. The 3525 will have the most torque, but the lowest top speed. And I really wanted to go up hills with this, so I decided to go with the 3525. Um, it's about eight kilograms, which is over 16 pounds. So huh, we'll see if this is too heavy. That was the big trade-off um, with uh, this kit. Um, then as far as the freewheel, I have a nine speed hub, so I just went for nine speed again. Uh, honestly, uh, I think I could have went for the seven speed, I have read on a forum, somebody had an issue with the chain getting sucked in between the lowest gear um, and the frame. Um, and uh, uh, that became a big issue with uh, their hub motor. The seven speed is a little bit thinner, so maybe it would have more space. I'm not sure, um, but I just went ahead and got the nine speed. Uh, as far as the controller, I went with their default, the C4A25. This is uh, their classic controller series. You have the 4825, 4835, 7240. These have those classic connections, the older connections. Um, and uh, 25 just it means that it has a 25 amp limit. 35 would have a 35 amp limit. Um, and, and the 48 is 48 volt. 7240 is the 72 volt 40 amp. This thing is massive. Um, in their controller sites, they mentioned to go with the smallest one you could use. I'm not really looking to go at crazy speeds. I think my system as configured is about a thousand watts. So the 25 amp was sufficient. The phase runner is significantly more expensive. And honestly, if it wasn't um, out of stock, I probably would have gotten this one for a couple of reasons. One is it is a lot smaller, so you could squeeze it into tighter spaces. It also, the, the bottom of it is kind of um, cut out so it fits nicely against um, tubes uh, versus the, the C4825 is just square. Um, uh, it also can handle a lot more current and uh, that could be useful for regenerative braking. Um, I don't anticipate having to brake too much. I just really wanted to limit my top speed a bit so I went with this, this cheaper version. The, the C7240 was just pretty massive and uh, I felt that would be more awkward to fit in 
on my bike where I want to fit it. So I went with the 4825. Um, this is the cycle analyst. This comes standard. Uh, this is a great device that you could program. Um, the, the, the V3, the CA3 V3 is nicer than the old version because you can actually plug in a lot of your sensors directly into the cycle analyst. And then you have one line running down to the controller, um, which, which saves on the wiring mess. Um, uh, as far as the CA3 switch, I picked, I picked this, uh, Deox slim switch. Uh, it's a three button switch. Um, uh, there's a couple reasons why one other option I was considering is this, um, this knob, this is kind of a continuous, um, variable resistor basically that allows you to adjust the amount of pedal assist or amount of, of motor power or voltage going to the motor. Um, uh, the nice thing about having this, this slim one here is, uh, you, you have a plus and minus button and in the cycle analyst, you could actually program this to have as many different digital presets as you want. So you could have five or two or 20 different power settings. And, uh, given the consistency of having digital settings, I thought this might be nice. I would know how many times to click down or up if I wanted to. Uh, additionally, the center button is not used and I'm, I'm actually wondering if I could use this to go in reverse. I'm not sure if, um, th there's a feature on the controller where you can actually, uh, change the direction of spin of the motor. Um, and for that, you need an extra switch. I'm not sure if this will work as a switch. Maybe I'll have to hold the button down while I, uh, go in reverse. I'm not sure. Uh, but that maybe that's not too bad. Um, so anyway, uh, this seemed like the best. Uh, switch for adjusting the amount of assist. As far as the pedal sensor type, I went with this PAS 12 P, uh, CHR. Uh, I think CHR stands for chain ring. So this goes against your chain ring. And, uh, the reason I did that is, uh, the, 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 uh, pedal assist sensor that would go on the other side of my chain ring would potentially interfere with my transfers. I tend, I, I sometimes put my hand, uh, up on the crank shaft, um, uh, for transferring. So I didn't want to lose that capability. So, so I got, uh, um, uh, this 12 pull one, uh, throttle. I actually, um, yeah, I got the T lever throttle. Uh, one thing to note, uh, you don't have an option to not have a throttle. Uh, I actually would have deselected this and bought it separately. You could buy things separately on this site. And the reason I say that is uh, the throttles that they ship actually come with two different uh, wire lengths. One is 40 centimeters and the other is 140 centimeters. And on the hand cycle, there's quite a distance because the, the throttle is not on your handlebar. Normally it's on your handlebar uh, really close to your cycle analyst. But in the case of a hand cycle, it actually has to go quite a distance. So um, I added a note. You can add an additional note when you check out Hey, give me the throttle with the longer cable. Uh, we'll see if that worked, <laughs> um, but I'm hoping it did. Um, torque arm, this is very important to prevent the motor from spinning out and potentially damaging your frame. Um, this torque arm is meant for a rear, uh, the rear of the bike, but given the frame geometry of my hand cycle, I actually wanted to get the V3 tor torque arm. So I got that separately. I did not check this box. E-brake levers for regen. You can get um, these uh, uh, e-brake levers. Basically, it's just a regular brake lever with a wire sticking out of it. And the purpose of the wire is to um, uh, tell the motor to shut off. Now, I did not want two e-brake wires because I only have one brake lever on one of my handles. So again, I put none here and I bought this separately. Uh, I did check off wire route kit. Uh, this has a lot of useful, um, uh, the spiral wrap is very useful for, for combining, uh, wires together. And you, you you're going to use a lot of zip ties from what I understand. And then these Velcro sleeves are also useful for again, covering the wires when it's close to your frame. Um, I did get the, the thermal sensor extension. I don't think I'm going to need to use this, but, um, uh, you know, uh, I, I, I think I might be able to use this wire for other things, if not, 
uh, thermal sensing. I think that one alternative is if the, uh, the slim button here does not work for reverse, I could use this to connect it to just some kind of simple switch I could get an at an electronic store um, and that will be my switch for going in reverse. So, so um, either I'll use it for thermal sensing or I'll use it for some other reason. So, so this is the way I configured my kit. Um, and then I had to buy extra stuff. So let me go through that. Um, and let's, let's get the stuff that, um, actually here, we could, we could add it to cart or maybe not. Um, yeah, it's out of stock, so we can't add it anyway. Um, just to see the, the full price. But anyway, that as, as configured ended up being 700, sorry, $588. So it's almost $600 for that. Um, and then there are a few e-bike parts that you need to get as well. Um, one of them is this throttle. So if we go to the uh, T-lever throttle, it's $15. It's the same price in the kits as it is if you buy them individually. I think the kits are just there for convenience. So here you could select the cable length. And I, I wanted to have the long cable length because my throttle is going to go all the way to the controller. Um, actually, it's going to go to the cycle analyst, but it's, it's far away from the handlebar. So anyway, uh, you want to get the long one. Um, then I got a brake, uh, e-brakes. So here I got the right e-brake. So you can buy just one brake and it's actually significantly cheaper. Um, normally it's 24 bucks for both. Uh, they had a deal for nine bucks, so it's 12 bucks, but, uh, now it's just connected to one side and you can get the 140 centimeter length, um, which is also another benefit. So I got the e-brake, um, then there were a few other parts. Oh yeah, the torque arm. Uh, torque arm. I ended up getting the torque arm V3. I actually got both V3 and V2 uh, in case uh, I was a little bit concerned with damage to my frame. Um, so just in case one doesn't work, I thought the other might. Uh, plus I might be able to use both. Um, that might be a little over-engineered, but uh, this torque arm fits much better um, on the frame. Uh, if you look at it, uh, it looks much more similar to uh, a front fork rather than a rear fork. Um, uh, then I also got the V2. Um, yeah, yeah, this one. Um, so this one, it connects to, uh, there's a little eyelet hole, I think for fenders, it, it did seem like the, the hand cycle has one. I don't, I'm not sure if it's necessarily for a fender, but I, I thought I'd be able to kind of uh, work this out and I got this just in case. Um, let's see, what else did we get? Uh, one other important piece was to get, um, I got some extra wiring. Um, what, what did I get? Uh, I got this, um, uh, oh, the DC extension and the DC split X3. So, so this is very useful. The, the cycle analyst allows you to connect a headlamp, um, and a taillight if you want, and you can control them from the cycle analyst. So, uh, for the taillight, I got this extension and I also got, um, this splitter, the DC split X3. Uh, the DC split X3 allows you to split the one connection into three. So one is going to be for my rear light. One is going to be for my front light. I might have a second rear light, um, but I'll, I'll definitely split it at least two ways. Um, so we'll see how that goes. And then what else did we get? Um, uh, yeah, batteries. I actually got one on Amazon, so I'll go over that in a minute. Um, but I also got a few lights. Uh, lighting, I think, is incredibly important uh, when you're on the road, specifically to you know let cars know that you're there. I got this uh, this guy right here. Um, they built this at Grin Technologies. It's basically some uh, LED lights. My understanding is very robust, and it's it's just um, uh, in in this kind of red resin. So everything inside is just covered in in resin, kind of glue. Uh, by epoxy glue or something. Um, uh, so it's, it's, it's very robust from my understanding and it can plug into any battery from 12 to hundred volts, uh, which is great. Uh, so in addition to that, I got a big headlamp. Um, this guy right here, uh, 
I've heard it's pretty bright, so we'll see. And supposedly rugged. Again, this is 12 to 100 volts, so you could plug it into your um, your battery directly. And then I got one other very important part, and that's for mounting my battery. Uh, that may be under, yeah under battery accessories. There's something called a triple bob. So what the triple bob does is it allows you to attach the battery to any part of your frame, really. Um, so uh, you have um, these hose clamps that will go around your frame and then around this piece right here, which then has holes to screw in your battery case. So this is for the down tube style battery. And uh, this I'm, I'm thinking is gonna be very important for mounting my battery. So another important item to get specifically for my kit, a lot of these other kits already have an option for it. I don't know why it wasn't listed in my kit. It seems like an oversight, uh, but it, it is the Steterade injection. If you search for Steterade injection on the, the, the store, um, you could see this inject motor with Steterade. Um, this is really useful. They actually have a very useful uh, uh, clip on YouTube that talk about the benefits of Steterade um, in, in cooling the motor. So they have this little motor, they were climbing up a hill and uh, they were measuring the temperature over time. And um, you could see the temperature climbs um, uh, fairly quickly, but then um, uh, fairly quickly, but then if you add the Steterade, I think it just stabilizes at 115 degrees and never goes above that. Um, uh, so if you want to prevent your motor from overheating, add this injection. And then one final thing I got is under, oh, and under shop, uh, e-bike parts, uh, CA accessories. So here I have a programming cable. Um, where is it? Uh, e-bike parts, CA accessories, cables. Oh, cables. Okay. Um, it is a USB connect. Oh, USB TTL programming cable. This guy right here. Uh, I got this guy because it doesn't come with a cycle analyst, which you'd think it would. Um, either you have to program everything through a cycle analyst and it only has two buttons, and I think that takes forever, or you could plug in this programming cable to your uh, MacBook or PC, and then you could set all the settings really quickly and, and conveniently. So um, I also got this USB programming cable, and then I got a bunch of stuff on Amazon. So the first thing I got, I found a great deal on a 48 volt battery. Uh, I got this 48 volt 17 amp Henry battery um, for uh, $428. I think the equivalent on um, the Grin website was something like six, $700, so significantly more expensive. The nice benefit about this one also is it has a, a, a port for charging your phone, which I thought was super useful. And this battery also comes with a charger. Um, so uh, yeah, we get the charger with it, which normally you also have to pay another 30 bucks for. So I think you're saving, you know, maybe $300 to $300. Um, and uh, I, I, I imagine maybe it, it doesn't have the same, um, uh, maybe you'll have slightly less uh, charge, maybe you won't hold it for as long, but honestly, um, at you know a 40% discount, it seemed like a much better deal to get it on Amazon. Um, what else did we get? Uh, I also got these, um, so I got, uh, yeah, let's go through this full list. I got uh, a freewheel spoke protector. Uh, this is to protect my chain from getting sucked in between the wheel and the easiest gear. Uh, this will protect it from getting in there. And I imagine with the hub motor, that would be a big problem. And uh, I wanna avoid that. I got the Schwalbe Marathon Plus um, a clincher tire. These are uh, well-known tires for touring um, they are very puncture resistant. Um, so I got this, this marathon plus tire, I got the inner tube, uh, and then, uh, since I got the battery, 
on um, on Amazon. Initially, I was going to buy it from another local vendor, but it turned out it was a two, three uh, week build time. That battery that I was going to get built was going to have a longer wire and the one on Amazon does not. So for that, I needed to get these Anderson connector, this Anderson connector kit. Uh, it's actually significantly cheaper than on the Grin website. I imagine it's just as good. Uh, I also got some uh, 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 thermal shrink wrap tubing. Uh, this is to kind of uh, help uh, you know protect all of the connections. And I got this 12 gauge wire. This is going to be used to extend the connection from the battery, which is in the back of my bike to the controller, which is in the front of my bike. I got this uh, crimping tool set. This was actually really nice. Uh, it's, uh, I think the Anderson uh, crimping tool just for the battery cable was 40 bucks. And then you needed a separate $30 crimping tool for the small JST connectors for all the accessories. This one kit for 30 bucks had both. Um, so you could crimp very small wires and crimp bigger wires. Um, uh, I thought that was a good find. Uh, I also got a dash cam. So what I'm hoping to do is I am actually going to install this in the back of my bike. And there's a couple reasons for that. One is I want to make sure to record any instance of any, um, you know, if a driver ever hits me, I want to record that and have, you know, their license plate number, et cetera. Um, uh, so that was one reason I wanted to get it. The other one is I am thinking I might be able to use this as a rear view mirror. Uh, I have one installed on my bike, but it doesn't really, it, it's hard to get a rear view mirror to go all the way around your bike. This will allow me to look directly backwards. Um, and it's only 40 bucks. So I got this, it should plug in directly into that uh, battery with the USB port. And finally, I got these bar ends. The hope with these bar ends is I can connect them. There's a section in the middle of my bike where I can connect them and I might be able to mount my cycle analyst. It'll, it'll basically increase an in amount of different mounting options I have for my cycle analyst. Um, so that, that really completes everything. Um, I think I spent over uh, almost a thousand dollars on the Grin website, but that includes, you know, the lights were a little bit more expensive. I think 70 bucks for the front light, 60 bucks for the rear light, uh, all of the accessories, um, Amazon, the biggest purchase was the battery for $430. Uh, but then with the battery, uh, sorry, with the tires, um, all the connectors, all the accessories, uh, I think we're close to $1,500 for the full setup. Um, and uh, yeah, everything should come in between Tuesday and Thursday this week. I am super excited about it and I will make sure to document everything and uh, post videos about it. So um, yeah, if you click on uh, the videos that are popping up on the screen now, you'll see either the playlist for all the different um, uh, videos I've made or the, the next video, which should hopefully have the installation process.